a blessed day to everyone and to all of my students from Pamantasan and Lunsod and Pasig. Hope that you are all well today. How I wish this pandemic will end soon so that we can meet face to face. With prayers, with prayers, I'm positive this will end soon. Today, I will discuss designing channel network. A fundamental task of supply chain management is structuring supply distribution channel networks. No business, no business is an island. All businesses are suppliers of products and services to their customers as well as customers of some other business products and services. But supply chains go deeper in, rea in, in reality. All businesses are members of a supply chain consisting not only of their own customers and suppliers, but also of their customers, customers, and suppliers, suppliers. Structuring effective supply chain system is therefore fundamental to the ability of all organizations to effectively leverage the resources and competencies of their channel partners to achieve competitive success. When confronted with this task of designing supply channel, design teams face a variety of decisions that must be considered on areas of factory role, efficiency and responsiveness, facility locations, capacity allocations, integrity intensity, and logistic costs. Questions such as, where should facilities be established? What roles do they perform in the channel? What criteria should be used to determine how they meet customers' needs? What physical factors such as local, infrastructures, attitudes of governments and the community, facility size and costs and others need to be taken into considerations? How many echelon should be in the supply and distribution channel? What is the role to be played by a channel partners? What channel design models are to be used by channel designers that assist them to make the right decisions that increase long-term profitability for all involved in the supply network? These questions need to be answered to make the right decisions. Answering this and other questions begin with the development of a comprehensive channel network design process that is used not only to establish greenfield channel networks, but to enable pl planners to effectively make changes to establish channels as marketplace conditions and company objectives change. The steps of the channel design model presented in this module are the following. First, map channel strategy. Second, segment channel. Three, channel positioning. Four, channel selections and PIP channel implementations. This channel design model is start by mapping the channel strategy. The overall goal is to establish a supply network that is integrated with and is supportive of the corporate business strategy. An effective tool that can be used is the channel network matrix. The matrix Enable designers to determine how supply and demand channel structures should be constructed that will support the business strategy. The matrix is basically concerned with defining the content of three basic decisions. How many echelon deep in the supply 
and distribution channel should the company extends its risk. Second, how many echelon are required to source production inventories and deliver products to the customers? And three, how many channel partners are needed to effectively manage supply and deliver in networks and what is to be the nature of their relationship? Once channel mapping has broadly outlined the configuration of the channel structure, channel designers must then determine the nature of customer demand. The next step is segment channel. In this step, customers are segmented by criteria such as profitability, average purchase, or some other dimensions. Once the market segmentation is completed, the next step is to determine the channel structures that best services the needs of the market segments identified. An important strategy is using the four channel service outputs, such as the bulk breaking, spatial convenience, waiting and delivery time, and variety or assortment. When combined with the channel decisions identified in the channel network matrix, they form a table where planners can now position the customers by their market segmentation characteristics. The third step in the channel network design is channel positioning process. It is constructing the various channel structures that will fit the findings arising from the channel network matrix and the customer segmentation design steps. As various design options are considered, channel design teams must keep in mind four groups of decisions criteria. First, the channel structure must satisfy the channel design attributes. Second, as the channel configuration is constructed, planners must be careful to identify which of the channel members is performing which of the essential 10 transaction flows detailed in module two. And third, planners must validate that the service output such as response time, productivity, or product variety and availability, customer's experience, order visibility, and others identified in the segment channel phase as essential, the customers are being met and that there are no gaps. Finally, design teams must validate that the various channel structures identified represent the minimal cost that is to be expanded by its network entity in executing the channel flows. Knowing the cost further assists in determining how channel profits are to be allocated equitably among channel members so that cooperation is fostered, improved, and reasons for channel complex are reduced. Once the possible channel structures have been identified in the channel positioning phase, channel designers are ready now to move to the next steps in the channel network design process, the channel selection. The overall goal of the channel selection process is to maximize customer responsiveness while optimizing company profits and lowering operations costs. Making the best channel network decisions requires planners to follow a simple four steps process. First, the facility selection is its issues. In the first step, planners must identify and quantify all necessary macro and micro issues affecting possible channel facility choices. Macro selection issues are concern 
with how well the proposed channel network meet corporate objectives. Microselection issues are divided into two categories, regional, community factors, and site factors. The second step is modeling choices. There are essentially five types of channel modeling techniques. The first consists of statistical charting, such as mapping techniques, spreadsheets comparisons, that use relatively low level of mathematical analysis. And the other four models, such as simulations, heuristics, optimizations, and expert system are dependent on complex mathematics and are run with the assistance of computer software. The third step is assembling the network. In this step, Planners identify the geographical areas where proposed channel facilities are to be located. Planners can employ gravity methods to find locations that minimize the cost of transporting raw materials from suppliers to plants and finished goods from plants to channel distributions and retail facilities. And the last step is confirming the network. The final decision is linking facilities to make markets and determining the capacity resources allocation for each channel facility. With the channel selection process completed, channel design designers turn to the final step in the channel network design process. The channel implementation. This step is concerned with the management of four major functions. The first is selection of channel members. Channel partners should be chosen that possess the attributes that best fit the requirement of the customer's market segment. The second function is the channel implementation step is determining the nature and distribution of channel power. Without channel power, the tendency of individual members to maximize their own profit, pursue their own strategies, will act as a powerful centripetal force splintering channel networks. The third function is the channel implementation step. It is the managing of, of complete in the channel. Because channels are really a coalition of independent companies, finding common grounds where all channel members can realize their own goals in an atmosphere of mutual trust is a delicate and often complex management skill. The final functions in the channel implementation step is achieving strategic collaboration. Channel networks work best when they cooperate, resolve power and conflict issues where each channel member benefits and the link goals and objectives so as to appear as a single unified organization focus on total customer service. In the end, a collaborative channel network must mature, grow, and develop into a valuable asset. They cannot be built quickly. Effective world-class channel network building requires persistence resources, and patience. In conclusion, a supply chain, chain network is play, in place will be optimal for helping company to meet established goals. A world-class transformational supply chain begins with a network that utilizes an all-encompassing view of the various business operations 
that manage the delivery of products to customers. The result is significant capital, operational and tax savings, helping to achieving optimal customer satisfactions. But then, the bottom line, frap it. Once again, thank you very much for joining me today. Hope that you were able to learn something today. See you again next time. Bye-bye.